So hopefully, this little framework that I'm bringing you through right now, realizing why something that we're all familiar with, ClickFunnels, exists. That's a big deal, right? Any ahas on that one? Yes, I mean, that's, that's big stuff to realize, oh my gosh, that's what they're born out of. So what my whole goal is, is to figure out the one market that I will birth my market from, okay? So when you are going in and you're creating your core offer, you should already know what market you're targeting at, what market you're trying to basically come out of. Make sense? Yeah. Makes the game way easier, right, to know that. Now I know exactly who I'm talking to. I know exactly what they're struggling with. I know exactly, what are they struggling with? Probably the product that they just purchased. So I can talk about that in my ads, right? Do you guys ever see those commercials? Uh, it's one of my favorite commercials, the, the um, Mac versus PC commercials. Yes. Remember that? Mac versus PC commercials. And uh, right, PC's out there, Bill Gates is out there crushing it. Steve Jobs comes around. And what does he do? No one really has a Mac computer, but what does he do in his ad? makes you want one, and he positions himself against the category king in his ads. Did the customer know they should be comparing those two? Nope. Not till we told them, right? Not till Steve Jobs told them. That makes sense? When the marketer said, did you know we're like the category king, but better, right? We're new, we're different. Did you know you should be comparing us to that category king? Be like, uh, no, I didn't know that. It's not like PC said, hey, would you like to compare us to you? And you're right, no. And so one of the easiest things to go do, like, right, is come out and say in an ad, hey, this versus that. Easiest lay down sales ever. And you notice when uh, Mac started getting a lot of speed and a lot of momentum, a lot of sales, what do you notice they started doing? Or what did they stop doing? That ad stopped running. Or they take PC with them. Okay? And that move happens a lot. It's the reason why we did the, uh, did you guys ever see the, the lead pages versus click funnels things we used to do? We called it Loki pages. It made like a whole thing. Remember that? We get really mad about that. But we, <laughs> I don't represent click funnels. I can say what I want over here, right? I love it. So I'll just tell you guys the real stuff. So we, we, uh, we started going it and we said us versus lead pages. And we did that because we identified lead pages as the one being that was directly above us. And as soon as passed, stop talking about them. And then who did, who ClickFunnels go after after that? Yeah, keep, yeah, right, Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft, then it was Confusionsoft. We made t-shirts and a banner and a huge campaign around it. And then the audience, he only did that one time. You notice that the audience carried that message, right? And they start spreading the message and, oh, and then you notice he's never run that again. And it's one of the easiest ways for you to start grabbing some market share from the one you're coming out of. It's so interesting because you take all this stuff and it helps you create this new one, but then you sell it directly back to the one you came out of. <laughs> Just nice, nice, right? <laughs> this lady, two or three events ago, it was probably like a year ago, I said, do you have any questions? She goes, are you ever gonna make an app with all the sound effects you make? Yeah. I don't know if I should be offended. <laughs> it was awesome. <clears throat> Make a lot of noises. Okay, uh, if we could shoot over my slides here. We are talking about market timing, and I want to pick right back up to where we left off with this. Um, ClickFunnels timed its market um, by, uh, again, coming out of the ClickFunnels world there. And it's funny because people will come up and say things like, well, I'm going to be the ClickFunnels killer, right? Now, just realize ClickFunnels has 340 employees, right? When I got there, there was 30 something. Um, there is, they spend half a million a month on Facebook ads, which is crazy. $500,000 a month in R&D, which I think they just like took on way more than that. That's when I was there. Um, huge content platforms. Does Russell, does Russell, Russell knows how to actually produce content, yes? <laughs> right, oh, tons of content. All right, so you gotta compete against that. You also compete against 100,000, they're about to hit 100,000 active subscribers, which is crazy, right? And then some chump comes around and says, I'm the ClickFunnels killer. And you're like, okay. Good luck, Chuckles. All right, <laughs> right? But it's because of what I was saying that the market is moving. There's momentum behind it. And someone stands up and they say, I'm gonna pit against that completely. Don't do that. Step out of it and then sell back in two. Right? And that's what we're talking about. Create a market and then sell back to the very same people he stepped out of. So I want to talk about market selection. This is fun stuff. How do you choose 
the one to come out of. As I've been saying this, have you guys been feeling like, oh man, I, I, I actually know what my market is now? Right? A few of you? Yeah? Or if, some people not, not quite sure yet, maybe? That's totally fine. Okay. Um, th- this, is one of the, this is one of the biggest tricks I can give you guys to choosing a market. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, the, uh, you know, here we go here. Um, this is actually something cool I learned from my dad. And um, you all have heard of my dad, right? And the wisdom that he, he's here. Can we give him a round of applause? Oh, you're right there. <laughs> no, no, Stephen. <laughs> you don't know, remember the story? I was uh, begging my dad for cash. He said, no. What? He said, if you... If I give you this money now, you will not exhaust the resources you didn't know you had. Crazy, amazing advice, right? That's amazing. That's like, now I got three kids of my own. I'm like, oh, how do I come up with cool phrases like that that will change their lives, you know? <laughs> that was changed my life, you know? I was so appreciative there. So I actually learned this principle from him. Um, uh, he had one of, the, one of the early businesses that I was trying with him, which you've been very successful with now, which is awesome, is uh, trading, financial trading. And, um, and we were you know, he's still doing it, which is awesome. And um, we were doing a lot of like things in the stock market. We learned how to trade stocks and options and things like that. And uh, we were chatting about it and, and we were talking about the New York Stock Exchange, right? And the New York Stock Exchange, um, the daily amount of money that moves in it from 2013 was $169 billion a day in trading volume, okay? And he goes, yeah, I'm actually not trading that much of that area anymore. Oh, really? How come is that? Why is that? He's like, yeah, I'm over here in the Forex space. I was like, why is that? He goes, because the daily trading volume compared $5.3 trillion a day gets traded in Forex. Whoa. Why'd you do that, Dad? Because I don't need to be as surgical and I can still make more money. Because the volume of cash is so much higher I don't need to be as, I don't need to babysit it as much. I don't, have as, I don't need to have as much skill. I don't need to be as, as, as crazy into it to make more money. Make sense? Yeah. Any ahas on that? Yeah. It's right straight from Papa Larson, okay? And that's a big deal to understand. And what I started doing when, I, when he said that, I was like, well, what markets am I, a, you know, a one, one arm's length away from grabbing that has huge trading volume comparatively. Meaning how much sales is going on? Now, let's, let's think through this. How much money do you think is going mixing around? I'm not gonna say like the actual number, but do you think it's a lot or a little going through the website space? A lot. A lot. Tons, right? New people coming in, I need a website, I need this. What's that? $1. Yeah, right, a lot of cash, right? There's a ton of cash. B2B, how much money do you think goes through there? Tons. Which one do you think is the weakest? We got coaching, retail, B2B, website, MLM, e-com, agency, right? It's, it's interesting to start thinking about that. I'm not gonna say, I don't know what the answer is, but that's the point though, is for you to start looking to see, if I was to put all eggs in the basket that I could, if I was to stack all cards in my favor, I should, one of the factors I should look at is how much money's moving in it. I don't have to be as good, and some of it's just gonna windfall to me easier. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, baby. Money. All right. So, <laughs> um, uh, real quick, this is how to know. And I'm going to hit several ideas here, then we'll tie them all together in about the end, okay? This is when a market becomes your foundation. And it goes back to this whole customer uh, uh, temperature, okay? Um, this, this, this one principle right here really shaped how, how I do stuff. I, I accidentally became the category king of one space. And then when I realized the pattern, it became easy for me to become the category king in the offer space. Okay. Um, so in, let me make sure. Yeah, let me go back a slide here. Okay. Let me draw this here real quick. What's fascinating is in markets and in traffic temperature, what are three kinds of traffic again? Right. Yeah, hot, warm, cold. 
and dream, dream over the top. Woo. Okay, we want that one. What I realized is that ClickFunnels isn't necessarily, they weren't actually creating customers, right? Who, who was creating ClickFunnels customers? Yeah, it's all, exactly, Red Ocean, all these other markets that exist out here, they are creating the ClickFunnels future customer. And we think about, wait a second, it's because they're gonna get into a place of frustration. They're gonna come buy things from here. This is one of the biggest hacks to finding huge volumes of customers. I know it's why, I haven't been gone from ClickFunnels for two years yet, but this has happened. It's because of this principle. What I learned, was that I want to find a market that creates my customer for me, okay? But that's not an easy thing to do on our own. Let me go forward here just a little bit on my uh, slides here. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay. From customer collection to customer creation. And this is what, uh, let me give you the answer real quick here, and then I'll explain it. I want a market. You guys doing okay? This is a little chewy. You all right? It's powerful stuff, okay? So I want to find somebody who has, um, it's easy for me to collect a hot customer because they're product aware, right? They're, they're problem aware and they're solution aware. It's a lot harder for me to create a customer. Somebody who is never planning on buying, okay? Now let's go through this real quick. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So this is, this is definitely, just so you know, the market section right here, definitely the meatiest. Okay, this is like the most like, oh, brain numbing, like, oh my gosh, that's crazy, kind of. So stick with me on this and I'll show you where all these pieces plug together in it. Okay, what I'm asking is, okay, which of these markets is the one that I'm gonna go in and choose? Which one is it gonna be? And the question that always is the thing that I look, if, if I can't answer this question the way I want it to be answered, I do not enter that market. Has my market made the transition between customer collection to customer creation. Okay, this is one, one more deep, and again, stick with me on this here, but watch this. If we look at hot, warm, and cold traffic, okay, how many of you guys, again, wanna go into the um, Kmart, anybody? You guys wanna go in Kmart with me? No? Yeah, if you can find one, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, Beanie Babies, Pogs Accessories, no? Why? They're dead. Why are they dead? They're not growing. Why did they stop growing? They didn't create the customer. Okay? They, they did not learn how to create a customer. When some little trinket hits the marketplace, who is likely to buy it? Yeah, other trinket buying styled customers. But if I'm not a trinket buying person, am I likely to buy it? And, and, and even if I wasn't likely to buy it, would they have the money to spend to educate me to buy it? No, it's a little trinket. This is a big deal to understand, okay? I want, it, I want to be able to have the market that I set up as my foundation for my whole business. It must have survived the transition between customer collection to customer creation. If that happens, that means I'm only, I have to make my sales message one time. That's why I haven't touched the secret MLM Hacks webinar since April of 2018. It's because I targeted it at a market that creates my customer for me. They went through the hard parts of creating my customer for me and I'm just collecting them. Make sense? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. yeah? That's really cool stuff. So here's an example here. Uh, what was ClickFunnels customer collection product? Funnel Hacks. Funnel Hacks was the one that they went to all these other markets to and said, hey, agencies, Funnel Hacks. Did you know it works for you? Funnel Hacks. You, that's the product that they went and launched into all these other spaces. What happened once they started running out though? One Funnel Away. How many of you guys went through One Funnel Away again? It's good stuff, right? It creates customers out of people who were never planning on being a customer. You get the aha? Is that cool? That's a big deal. Because now my marketing dollars are only spent 
to this incredibly hot, 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 so hot they're actually a buyer traffic. And I don't spend any marketing dollars on creating a customer. I don't create a customer. They create it out of themselves because they got so frustrated with the thing they're using. Yeah. Yeah. I really need some gold bars. Just drop them right there because that's, that's good stuff right there. It's juicy. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Hey, um... Uh, this is a big deal though. And so what I encourage you guys to do is that when you start seeking like, hey, which market am I gonna go sell into? Please look at two things with it. Number one, how much money is actually moving around inside the market? And number two, is that market, has it been around a while? Has it figured out how to make the trans? Most markets die. That's why Beanie Babies aren't around. They collected the easy ones. They don't have the money to spend to create customers out of people who are not planning on being Beanie Baby buyers. So they don't and the market leaves. That's why these pop shot little products that pop up, it's like, you know on Shark Tank? How many Shark Tank watchers are there? Yeah, yeah, I like that show a lot. And what's interesting is in that show, why can they make a trinket work? Distribution. 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 Those each, what they don't tell you in Shark Tank is that each of the people, each of the sharks, they're sitting and they have control of major distribution channels, meaning a list. They have huge lists, right? And some of them are like, I got a massive list in the retail space. And what they're really doing is looking to see, I know the percentages that usually sell well when I drop that product on my distribution. That's what they're really bidding with, right? That's what they're trying to get percentage of the company with. That's why it works so well, okay? That is when those little trinket things work really well. It takes advantage of existing distribution. Helpful? 